So this video will primarily focus on why you guys do not need to underestimate this entire process and then also will give you an idea of you know are you actually fit or cut out for something like this don't get me started hey everybody i'm shauna and welcome back to my channel shauna missy me hd where i strive to help you reach your educational goals by helping you gain admission into health related undergrad and graduate programs and today i'm talking about medical school of course and i'm going to specifically talk about what it takes to really become a doctor and this one is for my high school students and my freshman and sophomore students who are in college do you really have what it takes to get into medical school and ultimately become a doctor but before we get started, you guys know what to do. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and press subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you're the first to know when I release the next video. So I have two shout outs for today. One is long overdue and it goes to one of my favorite followers and subscribers, Brandon. He always watches my YouTube videos, comments on all of my TikToks and actually talks to me almost every day on Instagram and I love him so much because he gives me so much feedback and also gives me suggestions. This shout out is overdue for Brandon for sure. What's up? Also, I have another shout out and this goes to Miss Natalie. She commented recently on one of my YouTube videos sharing with us how she's a first year med student and she really enjoyed me kind of talking about the different specialties because she's right. If you don't actually have uh, exposure to medicine, then you'll never really know of the different specialties that actually exist. So shout out to both of you guys. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope that you're enjoying them. Now let's get right into this. So I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. Like this video is so overdue. And I guess it took me kind of building up my audience and really interacting with a lot of people to really see just how necessary this video is. And before you guys like click off or whatever, <laughs> I wanna start by saying like, I'm not trying to be negative, discouraging, rude, mean, any of those things on this video. I just want to be very transparent, honest, and direct and forthcoming with you guys so that you know exactly what you're getting yourself into when you say you want to pursue medicine. Now, the reason why I'm making this video is because I've gotten a lot of feedback and questions about a certain aspects of pursuing medicine. And I'm starting to feel like a lot of you guys really don't understand or really haven't grasped um, just how difficult this process is so the very first mistake that i think people make is thinking that you can watch Grey's anatomy or the resident or any of these other medicine shows out here and just say oh i'm gonna become a doctor and you're motivated and you're inspired and you're excited about what you see on tv but you're not really um exposed to like the real path to medicine and how difficult it really really is and how expensive it can be and i say that because a lot of people say oh i want to be a orthopedic surgeon and they probably either know an orthopedic surgeon or heard of an orthopedic surgeon through tv or something like that or just google highest paid doctors and orthopedic surgeon you know showed up or they say orthopedic surgery is one of the most competitive specialties and because you think you're just that bomb student you're gonna go for the most competitive okay i want you to know that everybody that gets to med school is that bomb student trust me okay something about that student is off the charts and they made it to med school so if you're one of the ones that's watching Grey's anatomy and you've been motivated and inspired by it you cannot ignore the other side of medicine okay yes you have to be motivated you have to be inspired like you need that to even start this process right but what's going to actually keep you on this track to medicine is your sacrifice is your discipline and your commitment to health your commitment to medicine your commitment to being a lifelong learner okay so that means you have to have other characteristics about yourself that is going to help you actually do this okay you have to be able to persevere when things get tough because they will get hard okay you might fail something are you going to do it again or are you going to give up and quit and do something else right um you might get rejected by med school your first time you apply are you going to apply again are you going to 
go back to the drawing board, figure out another plan and apply again and hopefully you get in or you're going to say, no, I'm going to give up. This isn't for me. I don't have what it takes. I'm afraid. You know, there are a lot of other parts to applying to med school that Grey's Anatomy really doesn't talk about that people on TikTok or YouTube really don't talk about. Like it's hard out here for some of us who don't have any resources. We don't have any mentors. We don't have any family members or friends who can like lace us up and give us that one-on-one -on -one real talk. It's going to be hard out here, okay? So you have to know that going into this is going to be a dog fight sometimes. And the dog fight might be with yourself, honestly. I'm just trying to get y'all the real, okay? So make sure you're not just living in some Grey's Anatomy fantasy, okay? I love the show. Trust me, I love it. I'm addicted to it. And I'm in medicine and half the stuff on there is exaggerated and I still love it, right? So I get it. It's, it's, it's hard not to want to live that life and be that person. But you also have to understand that there's a lot of other characteristics and personal qualities that you must possess in order to actually be successful in pursuing medicine. You will set yourself up for failure if you underestimate any part of this process, okay? I'm talking about being motivated and inspired, the pre-med uh, course track and whatever you decide to major in, application process for medical school, application process for residency. Like these, these are not your typical application processes, right? These processes literally take up to a year to complete, okay? Interviewing season, how much money it costs to apply, how much money it may cost to interview, MCAT, step, like all these exams that you have to take, you have to pay for them if you don't have someone to sponsor you or if your school doesn't cover or if your residency program doesn't cover. Like there's so many things that play into becoming a doctor that Google really doesn't tell you, right? Grey's Anatomy doesn't really tell you all that, right? So you have to understand that this is not a for play play thing like this is something that you have to commit to and know that it's going to be years and years and years of dedication sacrifice time and finances okay so please do not underestimate any portions of this process now speaking of underestimating i want to talk about some of the things that i hear so i get um so I'm a straight A student and I've taken all AP classes and school isn't really that hard for me. Um, I love math and I'm a science geek, X, Y, and Z, all those type of things. So I really don't think MCAT is going to be that hard. So do you think I can just get away with studying for two months? <sighs> that student right there is pretty much setting themselves up for disappointment. Because I don't care how well of a student you were in high school. I don't care how well you're doing right now in college. The MCAT is not a joke. And it really is the make or break for a lot of students. If organic chemistry wasn't prior uh, to taking MCAT, the MCAT will be a make or break for a lot of people. And there are some people who are just, number one, a genius. And they can just read something and like know it for life and they don't have to put a lot of time into studying and concepts come very easy to them you know there are people that are like that there are also people who don't really have a social life who are just really really focused on their studies and they can literally study eight to ten hours a day every day for the rest of their life if they had to okay if you're not one of those two people then you're probably like everybody else okay the average med school applicant who cannot just study for hours every single day and like actually effectively study not just be you know flipping through a flipping through a book and don't really comprehend anything if you're not that person if you're not a genius or whatever then you will likely have to put in some real time for mcat studying if you are someone who is not that strong in science or if you're not that person who is able to read a body of text and conclude this or analyze that or reference this then you know you may actually struggle with some of the reading portions of the MCAT so do not go into the MCAT with a big head okay you will shoot yourself in the foot 
and you don't want to be like me. Like, I was one of those ones who was like, oh, I remember. I think I know the periodic table. Oh, yeah, I remember that about the periodic table. Or, oh, yeah, I know the cell and cell structure. And, yeah, I know Newton's law. You know, I know all that stuff already. Like, that's how I was, and I bombed it, okay? So, you don't want to be that person that's like, well, I've always been a good student. I've always made good grades. It's not going to be that hard for me. No, you need to over-prepare for this exam so that you take it once and you get the grade that you want that, that'll that help you get into the med school of your choice, okay? So that's number one. Don't be that overconfident student who underestimates the exams and the pre-med courses. So the next thing I wanna talk about um, comes from a lot of the comments and questions that I get asked, typically through Instagram. Um, a lot of the students will say something like, yeah, I want to get into a top med school or these are my med school choices right now. And they literally have 10 med schools that are in the top 20, you know, and some of those students who are like hitting me up probably will get into those schools because they have amazing uh, MCAT scores, amazing grades and stuff like that. But then some of y'all won't. And it's not because you're not good enough. It's not because your grades and your MCAT score isn't good enough. It's because there's just not enough seats for everybody to go to those top schools. Okay, so there comes a point in time where you have to accept the fact that your scores are likely average. You'll likely go to an average medical school that may be ranked 95 right it may not be top 20 you might not get to go to harvard or whatever you may not be that and it's okay because the majority of doctors are not coming from the top 20 med schools right if you do the statistics the majority of physicians aren't coming from those schools so you know telling me that you want to go to the top med school i'm gonna say yeah go for it because that's what i'm supposed to like i'm supposed to encourage you and i want you to get into the top med school like it's not bs when i say go for it it's, it's real right like i want you to get into those med schools but i need you guys to understand that everybody won't so if there's a top tier med school that only accepts 180 students and they have 10,000 applications okay 9,820 of y'all not getting in. You're going somewhere else, okay? And it might not be to another top tier program. It may be one of the lower rank medical school, but it is okay because those doctors still graduate. They go to the same residencies. They get to specialize in the same specialties and nobody really ever asks what college you went to, what med school you went to. If you go somewhere in a non-patient ask you about your med school then okay but most patients don't even know that there are better med schools or more prestigious med schools than others if you're not coming from the top then it really doesn't even matter and it is okay some of you guys need to go ahead and accept the fact that you probably will end up at an average med school and it doesn't make you any less of an applicant or a med student or a future doctor okay you will still get a good training here in the u.s and it is okay and then my last thing that i want to talk about is knowing what you want to specialize in at the age of like 19 some of y'all 15 you know um it's good that you guys are motivated and inspired by a particular specialty and you already have your interest and you feel like that's what you're gonna do and that's great you guys should not let go of that but at the same time you need to understand that whenever you get to med school you don't just get to choose what you want to be um life would be too good if we all got to just choose our specialty it is all about competition so there are only so many orthopedic um, residencies in america of those programs there's only so many seats so I want you guys to understand that once you get to med school and you apply to a particular specialty, you have to be competitive. Now, there will be a few outliers. There will be some people who have awesome grades, awesome board scores, you know, awesome evaluations, and they still won't match to the specialty of their choice. It happens. There are some people who have the lowest, you know, grades and the lowest uh, board scores and like, satisfactory evaluations and they end up matching into a pretty uh, competitive specialty it happens but if you want to just go based off of that bell curve the people who fall right here in the average which is what you should base everything off of for the most part is the average student 
then you have to be competitive for a specialty. And in order to be competitive, you just have to work harder than everybody else. You have to make the better grades. You have to do more research. Your evaluations have to be stellar. You have to work with more faculty so that they can know you, so that they can write letters of recommendation for you. Like everything just has to be times 10, okay? So I want you guys to know that from the beginning. And I'm not saying you should give up your dreams of being an orthopedic physician and, and chase family medicine because it's the easiest specialty to get into or chase anesthesia because there's more seats than applicants so it's easy to get into right now that's not what i'm saying you should definitely keep whatever your interest whatever you're interested in near and dear to your heart and go after it but understand that it's not a you get whatever you want you know burger king have it your way it does not work like that. You have to be competitive and you have to pretty much outdo the other people who are also applying for those same spots. So that is what I wanted to address in this video, just to kind of give you guys a little bit more of a realistic uh, perspective of this process. So my job is to help you guys and I hope that this was helpful. Give me your feedback in the comments as always. If you have any personal comments or questions, you can always DM me on Instagram. Thanks guys.